Christoph, let me start with you. And you reminded me before we came on air that two years ago you said hard Brexit or nothing, we are there. So what does that mean for your asset allocation in the UK right now? Uh, regarding the UK, unfortunately, we are, as you can imagine, <coughs> on the way to UK assets uh, in our uh, asset allocation, especially for euro denominated and the uh, USD uh, denominated uh, portfolios. Um, and also because the sterling could be again under pressure. Uh, we uh, experience a quite a strengthening sterling versus uh, the USD and versus the euro over the past uh, three months, uh, expecting probably. Um, uh, a, a good decision regarding the Brexit, but nothing happened yet. And what we expect is a, a, a new deterioration in the sterling tr trend in the next uh, in, in the next weeks. Michael, great to have you with us as well from uh, Berlin. Is your base case still a soft Brexit from here? Yes, it is. The, uh, the uncertainties have uh, not declined. They are still very large. Forecasts are quite difficult, uh, but we have to make some kind of plan for our uh, economic uh, uh, positioning. And we do think that the, that the soft Brexit is still the most likely uh, scenario. Uh, one way could be that today the May deal actually in both of its uh, parts is passed. Um, that would be uh, good news for the markets. Uh, if it is not passed, then we will have another long period of uncertainty. I would expect then another extension of the uh, Article 50 exit and uh, continuing discussions. Uh, but I saw that the, uh, that the vote in the parliament was, was quite positive for a customs union. And that to me is an indication that many members of parliament uh, do want a less uh, disruptive uh, long-term solution for Great Britain and uh, therefore we think a soft Brexit has, a, has the best chance of a, maybe 70 percent. And what does that mean for UK growth in 2019 and 2020? Well growth is somewhat subdued by all the uncertainties that have surrounded uh, Brexit. Uh, you mentioned that some companies are thinking about relocations because of the uncertainty. We saw the, the pound plummet and it's risen again a little bit uh, in the hope for a softer Brexit. That has uh, uh, pu uh, pushed up inflation, reduced purchasing uh, power. Um, the, the economy is going at a speed of around 1.3, 1.4%. That still looks pretty good on, on a headline basis, but you have to see that it has also been pushed ahead by the stockpiling, which is going to end at some point in time, and the savings rate in the UK has gone down significantly. So this has stabilized consumption. So the, the, uh, the UK economy has already taken a hit. We expect around 1.3% growth uh, this year and the same number for next year under the assumption of a soft Brexit. If things turn out better than you expect, Christoph, are you waiting to put money to work in the UK? And if so, which assets would you be looking at? Uh, probably we will uh, enter again in the UK uh, equity markets, uh, which uh, could benefit from uh, a deal, a good deal uh, for the Brexit. But uh, unfortunately, it's not for the time being our core scenario. Uh, we have two main scenarios regarding the Brexit. The first one, which is our uh, base case scenario, is a long extension uh, discussion with uh, the European Commission to discuss about the Brexit and the way to do it. Uh, and maybe a long extension for what? Uh, is it for negotiation of uh, a new agreement regarding how to do the Brexit? Or uh, would it be for uh, early general elections? Uh, the probability are rising regarding um, the uh, general election, um, early general election. Mm -hmm. And the second scenario we envisage very seriously is a no deal Brexit, uh, which could also uh, a possibility. And these two scenarios combined represent, according to us, 80% probabilities to, to happen. 